That's where we begin tonight. Welcome to First News at 10. I'm Tom Crespo. And I'm Maureen Kane. Here's what's happening. The fire broke out earlier this evening on Munson Street in Denison, fully engulfing two houses within minutes. Victoria Moranin is live in Denison now with the very latest. Victoria? A suspect in the murder of a Murray State College professor is a free man tonight. Carter County District Attorney Craig Ladd says the case against James Baker was dismissed today for evidentiary issues. Baker was one of three people accused of killing Jane Bullard inside her home last March. Investigators say Bullard was raped and beaten to death before her house was set on fire. Angel Casa and Roy Zorns Jr. were also charged in the crime. Bullard's family says today's decision was a big disappointment, but people in the small town of Tishmingo have been very supportive. Prosecutors say the case against Baker was dismissed with prejudice, which means they could bring charges again. The other two defendants are awaiting trial. State lawmakers in Texas are considering a plan that would reduce the penalties for kids who text nude pictures of themselves. That's right. It's called sexting. And under current law, teens who do it could face felony child pornography charges, even if they send it to another minor. Under proposed Senate Bill 407, first-time violators under 18 would only face a Class C misdemeanor. Teens and their parents would have to attend a sexting education program. Senator Craig Estes says instead of punishing kids, this bill seeks to educate them. Gainesville Independent School District has announced their new superintendent this afternoon, Dr. Jeffrey Brasher, who it will be seen on the right in a picture that we have for you, has been selected out of 27 candidates. He's currently the superintendent at Brady ISD, where he's been since 2008. He will assume his position next month. Well, still ahead on First News at 10, they may look like strippers, but one group of Houston women say this dance is for Jesus. A family has traveled hundreds of miles back to Texoma searching for answers about their loved one's disappearance more than eight months ago. Jennifer Sanders is live in the studio now with more on that story. Jennifer. Still to come on First News at 6, an unusual shortage across the state of Oklahoma could cause problems for livestock. We'll explain later in the show. Oklahoma ranchers are scrambling to find feed for their livestock. The State Department of Agriculture says more hay was used during this year's snowstorms, and that combined with dry weather and grass fires across the state led to the shortage. The state is now encouraging anyone with hay for sale to list their supplies online, but one local salesman says it's not just hay that's in short supply. Now, if you have any hay for sale, you can log on to KXII.com. We will post a link to the State Department of Agriculture's website right there. A U.S. lawmaker from Oklahoma wants to give a tax break to those affected by natural disasters like the recent Atoka County tornado. Senator Jim Inhofe is proposing the Southeastern Disaster Tax Relief Act of 2011. Under the legislation, people affected by severe weather, like the Atoka tornado on April 14th, could withdraw funds from their retirement accounts without having to pay penalties. Small businesses that cannot operate due to a storm would get a tax break, and individuals could also deduct an unlimited amount of contributions to nonprofit groups. The act would free up an estimated $5 billion in tax relief to parts of Oklahoma, Alabama, and Missouri, among others. And we want to remind you that the deadline to apply for disaster assistance for residents of Atoka County is June 21st. We have more details on the web channel, kxi.com. Alabama, like Oklahoma, has been hit hard by deadly tornadoes. Now storm shelters have been become mandatory in new schools in that state. Madison City High School, seen here, will be one of the first schools in Alabama to have what's called ICC 500 storm shelters. Plans call for two safe areas in the new high school, one in the gym and the other in the school auditorium. They'll each hold more than 2,000 people and have 12-inch thick walls. The requirement for storm shelters shelters in new schools was actually in the works long before the April 27th tornado outbreak. It stems from a 2007 storm that killed eight students at Enterprise High School. A man was killed while crossing a highway early this morning. The Bryan County Sheriff's Office says they believe the man was walking on Highway 70 just east of Bochita. His identity is not being released. OHP is sending troopers and they are assisting Bochita police in their investigation. 
Sherman police also investigating an accident that happened just after 11 this morning. They say two cars collided at the intersection of the Highway 75 and 82 service roads. One person was taken to a local hospital with minor injuries. Both drivers claim they had green lights. Police are still investigating. So far, no tickets have been issued. Early this morning, the Texas Senate passed a new bill that would expand illegal immigration enforcement throughout the state. Dia Wall has more. And there may soon be a shorter wait at some Sherman traffic lights. Which intersections are getting makeovers that could save you time? Well, drivers can expect some new traffic signals at several Sherman intersections. TxDOT says they'll replace signal heads, install video cameras, and install new pavement markings. The cameras will be used to actuate the traffic signals, which will allow the green light to operate according to traffic demand. Crews will begin setting barricades and signs tomorrow at the intersections of the 75 Frontage Road at East Houston and East and West Lamar. Now, only one lane of the highway will be be closed once work begins and there will be temporary four-way stop signs installed at the intersections while construction is underway. The $130,000 project should be completed within 60 days.